The falling leaves tell a story of a tarnished who became obsessed with the idea of big, glowy trees. Based on everything that is known about physics, biology, and definitely not magic, he asked, how big can a tree actually get? Can a tarnished use this question to learn something special? about the lands between. Can one even imagine not having any maidens? <laughs> Keck W ratio fell off. To find out, we now fast travel to the lands of science and some guy's idea of a totally not supervillain lair. Lair, lair. Now entering the facility. There are many things to gawk at in Elden Ring, from dragons that unfairly one-shot you to guys that literally eat poop. But arguably the most impressive visual in the game has to be the Erd Tree, a centerpiece of the story and gameplay. It towers above distant towers and illuminates the worlds between with an otherworldly glow. Now after booting up the game myself, instantly dying to the tree sentinel and rage quitting, I thought to myself, how big can a tree actually get? Is there a world where an Erd tree like this makes sense? Well, much like From Software's camera, movement, and gameplay, the actual answer is much more complicated than you think. Gamer Chair Descend. First of all, brave tarnished, we must ask ourselves, what actually limits the size of a tree? What keeps a tree from, say, growing all the way into space? Well, a first approximation anyone with a maiden might give you is that trees can only stretch as high into the sky as water can, and that's something that we can calculate. The atmospheric pressure on Earth is roughly 100,000 pascals, or newtons per square meter. Now, how much water can that atmospheric pressure support if they're pushing against each other? Well, the density of water is roughly 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter, multiplying by the surface gravity of Earth. That's 10,000 newtons for every cubic meter of water, dividing into atmospheric pressure, and you get 10 meters. Yeah, metric numbers are pretty nice to work with, aren't they? America, and you can prove this 10 meter limit through experiment, as my adoptive father Veritasium did with a giant straw. Even with a perfect vacuum on one end, the water raises up 30 feet or 10 meters and no further. In fact, it boils right there. But this first approximation of ours has to be wrong, right? Because it differs from our observations. There are billions of trees all around the world that are taller than 10 meters, so how are trees pushing past this pressure limit? Ah! I pressed dodge. It might surprise you to learn that we only discovered how trees push past the pressure limit a little over 100 years ago. In 1895, Irish plant pathologists H. H. Dixon and J. Jolly proposed that water is not just supported by atmospheric pressure, it is actively pulled up the plant by negative pressure. As water evaporates from the surface of a tree's many leaves, the voids left behind create innumerable low pressure zones. Water in the tree wants to fill these zones, and it does so through very thin biological tubes called xylem. xylem. Isn't that the name of Elon Musk's kid? Xylem evolved to take advantage of the inherently strong adhesive and cohesive forces between water molecules, and moves water like a molecular chain from roots to leaves. Xylem does this so well, in fact, that the estimated tension required to break this flow is the same tension it would take to break steel wire. So, when water leaves a tree's leaves, water is literally pulled by negative pressure past the 10 meter limit like so many steel wires from ground to canopy. This cohesion tension theory brings us back to Elden Ring. If the theoretical maximum height for a tree depends on negative pressure, which can't get too large or else the xylem collapses, and pressure on weight, then the tallest a tree can get ultimately depends on gravity, and therefore the mass and radius of whatever planet the tree is on. And taking all these facts together, poor tarnished, 
we can now begin critiquing this fictional world thought up by a guy with a beard. A fictional place made by a guy with a beard? Can you imagine? <laughs> I know, right? Who would do that? Uh... If we want to know whether or not a tree can get as tall as the Erd tree, we have to know how tall that is. And so, of course, we turn, as we always do, to the dweebazoids over at Reddit. User Elijah used geometry, some estimation, and the map of Elden Ring itself to estimate that the Erd tree is supposed to be 500 meters tall. This is crazy. This is five times taller than the tallest recorded tree on Earth, Hyperion which itself is a pretty cool name for an Elden Ring boss. So, is a 500 meter tall tree possible if we start messing around with variables like gravity? Well, now we actually have an astrobiological question. Exoplanets, vegetation, gravity, habitability. It's time we bring in the experts. Apparently, the only scientist who is thinking about how tall trees and other vegetation might be on other planets is scientist and author Dr. David S. Stevenson, who is gracious enough to answer my questions via email and send me a copy of the only paper I could find on this subject, Planetary Mass, Vegetation Height, and Climate, published in the International Journal of Astrobiology. In it, Dr. Stevenson uses the relationships between pressure, weight, and gravity that we already talked about to come up with a delightfully simple equation for maximum tree height. Given the mass and radius of the exoplanet it's growing on, and assuming that the trees of any planet with a higher surface gravity than Earth, and therefore heavier water, will necessarily be smaller than 100 meters, the height of trees like Hyperion. This is where we have to start making some educated guesses. I have no idea where Elden Ring takes place. Earth? Middle Earth? The pocket behind the suspenders of G.R.R. Martin? I don't know. And so we shouldn't just pick any old numbers. It may be totally off a good starting point. Instead, what we should do is find some reasonable comparisons that will get us towards where we want to go, the tallest possible tree. So why don't we start with the smallest possibly Earth-like exoplanets that we know of. TRAPPIST-1e is a great candidate for this. It has a much more mm, modest set of variables for its mass and radius, and plugging these variables into our simple equation, we get Okay, just 108 meters. Not very impressive. Basically the same as Earth's theoretical maximum. So how about TRAPPIST-1d? Now TRAPPIST-1d has a much smaller mass and radius, and if you plug this in to our equation, you get almost 700 foot tall trees. Now, now we're getting somewhere, but I still don't think it's worthy of G.R.R. Martin's suspender. <laughs> I pressed Dodge. One of the smallest exoplanets that we know of around a sun-like star is Kepler-37b. It likely has a rocky surface, but its surface is way too hot to have anything like liquid water on it. Still, let's use our equation anyway. With a mass just 1% of Earth's and a radius a third of Earth's, plugging this into our equation, we get a theoretical maximum tree height for this location of over a kilometer tall. 50% taller than the tallest thing ever constructed on Earth, and more than twice as tall what we're guessing the Erd tree is. However, something I've learned when doing nerdy calculations like this is that we still have to check if our answers make sense. Weird equations don't care if your answer is right or wrong. These equations don't care if your answer makes about as much sense as having a third-person camera in a AAA game that makes your game almost unplayable. So does having a Kepler 37b-like location for Elden Ring for its surface gravity make sense? Well, probably not. We don't even know if Kepler 37b actually has a surface or if it's inhabitable by things like dung beetles and dragons and weird finger ladies. So what do we conclude? There are my runes. There they are. I'm not mad. He died to Malekith, the Black Blade, 37 times. Like, if you're gonna make a game that is based on a rhythm of dodging and attacking, why do you make the inputs on your controller 
delayed by like a, 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 a blink's worth of milliseconds, like 120 milliseconds. If you delay the input, you feel sluggish, you feel slow. It is, it is making the game more difficult without it being fun. I think it's completely accurate to say that since maximum tree height depends on variables like gravity, if the lands between are significantly different across these variables, then yes, you could very likely have trees much taller than anything you find on Earth, though probably not as suspend-a-slappingly enormous as the Erd tree, at least based on exoplanets that we know of right now. It pains me to say it. But unless the lands between exist in some fantastical, almost nonsensical, we've never discovered kind of place, it might take a little bit of magic to make this tree work. Until next time. But I don't like magic. Boo! Now exiting the facility. Thank you so much to the very nerdy staff at the facility for the direct and substantial support in the creation of this here video. If you want to drape on a silky white lab coat, which we are now selling, if you want to see videos early, if you want to get into the members only discord, if you want to see monthly live streams with yours truly, not like that. You can go to patreon.com slash Kyle Hill and join the facility today. And if you support us just enough, get your name on Aria here each and every week. As you can see, there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of you supporting us just enough. And I I have no idea how I'm gonna pass all this time. And what's really cool, well, thanks Dr. Stevenson for answering my emails, by the way. Pick up his books, they're interesting. A cool experiment to show that the cohesion tension theory was correct, that they did, that uh, trees were pulling up material uh, water up from the ground was uh, they cut down a tree and then instead of placing the tree in water they put it in a solution of I forget exactly what it was but like acid kind of stuff that would kill the tree so this fluid was being pulled up the tree killing the tree as it did so but it went all the way up the tree and killed the whole thing you wouldn't expect that to happen if it was being, if the pressure differential was being generated by the roots or something like that. Once it killed the roots, they would be no longer pulled up. It's just so they proved it. It's a simple experiment. I love those kinds of things. Oh, I guess I did pass the time. Thanks for watching.